of what Jesus did at Calvary that has brought us glorious riches today. So I want you to sing this song with intentions. No sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me. No me, no me without you. Said, no throne without the cross. There's no sacrifice without your blood. All this, all this, and more. No me, no me without you. Now listen. In Revelation chapter, I mean, Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 6, it says, We are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. If there was no cross, there would be no seat for us. If there was no sacrifice of his blood, there would be no glorious riches for us today. So I want you to soak yourself in the revelation of this word. No throne without your cross. No There's no sacrifice. All this you did for me. No me, no me without you. No throne without your cross. There's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me. No me, no me without you. In one minute, just tell him that Jesus, there is no me without you. I may be complaining about what I'm, I don't have right now. I may be complaining about my situation, my circumstances. But ultimately, there will be no me without you. There will be no me without the blood that you shed at Calvary. There will be no me without the cross. No me without you. Everlasting Father, we give you praise. Lord, we are the ones that you have saved. We are the ones that you have shown mercy. You went to the cross so that we might sit on the throne. You shed your blood so that we might be rich without measures. You shed your blood so that we might be healed. Lord, we give you praise. Jesus, we have come to learn from you this morning. We have come to hold on to the horns of the altar. And we come with the understanding of what you have finished on the cross for us. And we have come to enter into the inheritance that you have laid down for us. Jesus, we ask that you open the heavens over us. Again, we, take, we make a confession unto you that there will be no throne for us to sit without your cross. There will be no riches to lay hold without the sacrifice of the blood. Say there is no other sacrifice that can be made but that which is made, which is Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And on that cross, there was a man that gave himself all for me. Lord, we give you praise. This morning, Jesus, we, think we have not come here to complain. We have not come here to speak at you. But we have come, oh God, to learn from you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open the heavens over us. Speak to us, oh God. And let our lives be blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come myself for using your hands, O oh God. 
I ask that you fill this vessel with your content. He said, a body you have prepared for me, Jesus said. Lord, this body, oh God, let it speak out the word of grace. The word that edifies, the word that elevates, the word that set free in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brethren, before you take your seat, I need you to put your hands together for the act of worship. Please, please join me. Put your hands together for the act of worship. You know, um, as we were ministering, it just came to my spirit, man, again. Please sit. Please sit. And again, I want to welcome everybody that's uh, worshiping with us online. If you're watching... Uh, worshiping with us online, we welcome you and we pray that you'll be blessed mightily today in Jesus' name. And of course, we have already been blessed. This ministration was not a song, was not a special number. This is mystery. This is mystery. And you know, mystery is such that was hid and is now revealed. It's an epiphany. It's an epiphany. It's something that is being revealed. It gives you an aha moment. So today, the Lord is going to speak to us. Now, we're going to go into some deep teaching this morning, and I want you to please stay with me. And of course, when we go to class to learn, we always go with our writing materials, right? So I want somebody to be prepared to take notes, because the Lord is going to take us into some mystery some deep teachings about our inheritance in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this month of uh, October is the month of um, glorious riches, right? And we find our scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and in verse 9 in the Passion Translation. Therefore, we have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, I need you to take note of that. It was infinitely, that means without measures, without limits, unlimitedly rich. Yet, he impoverished himself for our sake, for my sake, for your sake, so that by his poverty, you and I become rich beyond measure. Now, we're not just going to become rich. We're going to become rich beyond measure. In the name of Jesus. So if you are not rich yet, there's an inheritance of riches for you. I thought somebody was going to say amen. amen. Whatever you are believing God for, it is your inheritance to enter into. So today we're going to be teaching on my inheritance in Christ. My inheritance in Christ. My inheritance in Christ. And we're going to take our scriptures from Colossians chapter 1. We're going to read two verses in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I want us to be students of the word this morning as we pay graft attention to mystery. Now look at this. It says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in his inheritance of the saints. So there is a qualification to share in the inheritance of the saints. Is that making sense? And the inheritance is for the saints, God's people in the light. Amen. So when we're talking about glorious riches in this month, we're talking about an inheritance or inheritance of the saints. We're talking about glorious riches for God's people that are in the light. Now give us verse 13, sir. Verse 13. 13 says, For he has rescued us. No throne without a cross. There is no sacrifice without the blood. For he has rescued us by his blood. That's my own version. And has drawn us unto himself from the dominion of darkness. So that is one inheritance right there. That no darkness can prevail over you. No darkness can prevail over me. Because he has rescued me. He has done the work on the cross. I'm not just doing it right now. And he has drawn us 
unto himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So there is a transference this season. You are being transferred from sickness, transferred from struggles, transferred from afflictions into the beloved son. And in the beloved son, it says, in him draws the Godhead bodily. So all the Shekinah, the glory of heaven, draws in the son. Hallelujah. And that's what he has transferred us into. Now talking about our inheritance and the saints, I mean, in Christ Jesus. 2021, my beloved mother passed on to glory, went to be with the Lord. You know, and um, we went for the funeral and we went to the probate office. Now listen, to read our will. Not only to read our will, but to know our inheritance. Is that making sense? Now, listen. It was only our children that were in that meeting. Qualification. Qualification. Now, I haven't had our inheritance. It took a couple of years before we could access the inheritance. It was a lot of struggle. It was a lot of bumps, a lot of hills and valleys. But we had a confidence, regardless of the bumps, the hills and the valleys, the inheritance is ours. So do what you can. Prostrate as much as you can. Legally, by qualification, this inheritance is still coming back to us. So we were just having fun and believing God that the inheritance is going to come. Now think of this. Think of this. You woke, I mean, you wake up tomorrow morning, ma, and you find out that you have a $20 million inheritance, but you cannot access it until two years. Right? Ma, between now and 2026, it does not matter what you're going through. Am I making sense? 20 million is waiting for me. If the landlord likes to throw me out, I will go and live with a friend. It's a matter of time. If my mortgage cannot be met, God forbid foreclosure. Take your house. When I get my 20 million, I'm going to buy a $1 million house, cash down. Edda will be looking at me stupid. That why would you spend so much money? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I'm saying this to say that in Christ Jesus, we even have more than 20 million. You have more than 100 million. He said, a, we will make us rich without measures. Rich without measures. So it's not just going to be money. You're going to be rich in every facet of life. Because he left everything in heaven. And he came down here so that you and I might be rich. That's the good news I have for somebody today. Now, going back to our 20 million, you will be living life with excitement. A lot of people will be wondering, with all this man is going through, but if you are a wise man that keeps your mouth quiet, they won't know you have 20 million touched up somewhere, just waiting for time to roll by. Same way, we would need to live life with excitement because we know that Jesus has qualified us for all the blessings that are stashed up for his saints. Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 3, I've said this time and again. It says, thanks be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms in Christ. I say we don't need those blessings in heaven. Those blessings must manifest here on earth. So there must be a protocol to bring these heavenly blessings into physical manifestation. And that protocol starts from you knowing your inheritance, walking in your inheritance, living life from victory stance, not from a defeated Christian. You know, a Christian or a man that does not know he has an inheritance, the inheritance will be sitting there, yet it will be living a, 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 a sorrowful life. A while ago, a couple of years ago, the Lord brought me to a revelation that at creation, he made us the envy of every other creation. Does that make sense? But when Satan came, man became the pity of other creation. You will not live a life of pity. I will say it again. <laughs> Men will not always pity you because you are living from victory stance. Your address is now on Victory Street in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And 1 Peter 1 and in verse 4, 1 Peter 1 and in verse 4, it calls this inheritance in Christ Jesus. It says, born anew, it says, it is an inheritance which is imperishable. Money can perish. Houses will perish. Cars will perish. But we have an inheritance in Jesus Christ that is imperishable. Now it says beyond the reach of change. Economy changes and your money loses value. But the economy of heaven from where we operate does not change. It says it's undefiled and unfading. Reserved for who? Reserved in heaven for who? <laughs> you are not confident. You are not confident. If we were not confident, my, my Pastor Rachel would tell you the struggle we went through to enter into that inheritance. If we did not stand our, our ground, even though they, want, they can't access it, but you'll be denied of it. And that is what the devil does. That's what the devil does. Now listen. When God was going to create man, he said... Let us make man in what image? In what image? So man was made in God's image, all right? Already made in God's image. Then when, the, when, the, when Satan came in Genesis chapter 3, what did he tell Eve? That if you eat of this fruit, you will be like, aren't you already like God? But devil will paint an image before you to make you feel you are not who you are. And that is how Christians lose their inheritance. But that will not be your portion. That will not be my portion. As a matter of fact, give us verses 5 and 6 of this same scripture. Verses 5 and 6. They say, who are being protected and shielded by the power of God through your faith of for salvation that is, already, that is ready to be revealed for you. In the last time. Now see verse 6. He say, in this we rejoice greatly. Somebody leaves this meeting rejoicing. Somebody right now, it does not matter what you are going through. In this you rejoice greatly. Because you have an inheritance that is imperishable. That faded not and that cannot change. He say, even though now for a little while. If necessary, I have been distressed. I have been distressed. I've been sick. Marriage has been a struggle. But ultimately, you have an inheritance. It doesn't matter the distress. It's a distress by the virtue of trials. But in this, you have an inheritance that you are qualified for. We're going to enter into that in a little bit, in Jesus' name. Now, listen. Thank you, uh, Art of Worship, for that song. There is no inheritance that can be accessed except the person 
that is living the inheritance dies. Does that make sense? So that's why <laughs> what you sang was not just a song. There is no inheritance without a cross. Except Jesus died, we wouldn't have had any inheritance to lay hold to. Am I making sense? Now, come with me to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. Hebrews 9, 16, sir. Hebrews 9, 16. Now, watch this. It says, for where there is a will. Now, remember, I said we went to the probate to read my mother's will, right? We couldn't have done that when she was alive, right? Now, it says, for where there is a will and testament involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. 17, sir. 17. Say, for a will and testament takes effect only at... Did Jesus die for you? Did he write a will for you? Do you have an inheritance in the will? Hallelujah. So what is it that we're going through today? There is an inheritance for us in Christ. For a will and testament takes effect only at death, since it is never in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Jesus had died here on earth. He rose and is seated in heaven. So because there was there will be no throne. I can't get away from that song. There will be no throne. There will be no throne. There will be no throne without the cross. So he went to the cross so that we can have a throne. Hallelujah. And your throne could be anything. <laughs> your throne could be whatever you want it to be. But it is very important that we are made qualified. So we have established that a will was written and there must be death is being established because there's no sacrifice without the blood. But Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, Colossians 1 and 12, it says, He had qualified us, qualified us to share in this inheritance. Please stay with me. And John 1 and in 12, John chapter 1 and in verse 12. So, but as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become what? That is the qualification. Like I told you earlier, only my mother's children were allowed into that meeting. For now, that was just a human. But we're talking about God. Because we have identified with Christ. We are his children. So we are allowed into probate. And we're going to say, I'm going to tell you what that probate represents for me right now, which is your scriptures. Hallelujah. We're going to get to that. You know? So as soon as, as long as we are qualified by salvation, then we have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. So when we begin to doubt ourselves, when we begin to live a hopeless life, when we begin to think that the devil, Satan, is having an upper hand, let us remember that Jesus has died for us. By so we have an inheritance in him. Then that will stir up our faith. Now, Jesus did not tell us as Christians that everything, I mean, life will be like a walk in the park. He said, behold, in this world, you will go through many tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Before I will live here on earth, I will overcome the world for you. So by the time you call me, you will walk from victory stance in the name of Jesus Christ. So without this qualification, there is no inheritance. I want to drop that with us. So when we're talking about glorious riches in this month of October, please know that you must be qualified for it. You must be qualified for it by salvation. If you are watching us online, you must be qualified to enter into this inheritance by salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And what scripture is referring to as the saints, like we said earlier in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, Colossians 1 and 12, saints are you and I. As soon as you are born again, you are a saint of God. Amen. 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 And um, our inheritance, like we said earlier, goes beyond money. Goes beyond a, a big house. It goes beyond big things. And mind you, I love all of this. I want big money. I want big houses and big cars. But beyond that, we have a glorious inheritance in Christ Jesus. And we're going to, we're going to go into that in a little bit. We're going to go into that in a little bit. But one, I want to take our minds away from the fact that, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Talking about qualification, <laughs> a story just came to my mind. I think it was that Geo that gave that story a while ago. Now listen to this. A lot of us will come to church watching online, but we need to be qualified as children of God, genuine repentance. Am I making sense? So there was this king in this part of the world from where we come from. I mean, there were kings in those days, right? Royalties and all that. They will have so many wives and concubines, right? And in that tradition, especially in our part of the world, um, a king cannot, <laughs> excuse me for the lack of a better word, a king cannot attend or service to all the wives alone. Am I making sense? All right. Ma? <laughs> all right. So, some of the chiefs are helping out. Some of the important people around him are helping out. And wives, uh, children are increasing in the, in the palace. But the king knows who his children are. When the king is having a ceremony, the princes and the princesses will be falling by and will be telling his friends, that one, that one is my daughter. But this, this one is a princess. Can God call you a son or a daughter? Or are you just a princess or a prince because you come to church? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. Now we're going to look into some of the inheritance that we have in him. I'm running out of time. And we have to pray. We're going to look at some of the inheritance we have in him, right? Number one, sonship. The ultimate, number one inheritance is sonship. Somebody say sonship. Sonship. It's not because you come to church. There were so many princes and princesses in the palace, but the prince knows, he will tell them, this is my son. He won't just call him a prince. Of ultimately, king's son, king's daughters are son, princes and princesses. But by virtue of qualification, this is my son. This is my daughter. Can God tell you? You know, uh, Jesus at uh, Jordan, they help, the heavens were opened over him and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove and, and the Lord spoke. Say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That will be your testimony. Everyone will testify of you that you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Sonship. Romans 8, 16 and 17. Real quick. Romans 8, 16 and 17. Now watch this. Now it says, the spirit itself testified and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. 17, say, and if we are children, I mean, if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Now, what are we doing? Say, sharing his spiritual blessings and inheritance. If indeed we share in this, in this suffering, that we may also share in his glory. Somebody will be glorified. It is going to be a glory season as we share in this inheritance in the name of Jesus. Now write this down. Number two, inheritance is peace. 
is. Because the Prince of Peace himself, the firstborn, <laughs> John 14 and 27, John 14 and 27, watch this. See what the Prince of Peace says. Now, this is the Prince of Peace speaking. Jesus said, peace I live with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. So the world gives peace. But Jesus saying, not as the world gives do I give you. So do not let your heart be troubled. I speak to anybody that is troubled here. The Prince of Peace is speaking to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Nor let it be afraid. That that you are scared of, a provision has been made for you. All you need to do is to enter into it. To let my perfect peace calm you. So, so calm yourself. I need you to calm yourself down. Pastor Rita has always caught me. I've been making some statements recently, and she will look at me and say, You shouldn't be saying that. So I, now I'm calmed down. And let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Somebody is receiving courage and strength. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, again, I need to let you know that peace is not an event, right? And peace is not a feeling. <laughs> if you're writing, write it out. Peace is not an event. Oh, because I just got a job and I'm at peace. You are, you are, you've missed the point. Or because I just got married. Oh, you are getting married in a couple of days. You'll be at peace in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, but beyond that, peace is in Jesus. The ultimate peace is in, no wonder, in Mark chapter 4, I believe, going into 5, to let us cross to the other side. And the Prince of Peace was seen in the boat. Did the storm come? Storm will come. It will rise. We well, say the voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many waters. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it does not matter the voice of the storms and the waves. The voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many waters. Peace is in Christ Jesus. Now we have inheritance of wealth. Wealth and increase. Wealth and increase. Ezekiel 36 and in 11. I love this scripture. Ezekiel 36, 11. Ezekiel 36, 11. Now listen to this. Say, I will multiply on you. Amen. Man and animal. So that means you will increase on every side. In your business. In your household. For those that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. There is multiplication over you. Say man and, oh my goodness, the Lord is saying to me that he will multiply us in marriage, in restoration church, in the name of Jesus. Say I will multiply you, man and animal. They will increase and be fruitful. And I will cause you to be inhabited. Now he's talking to the mountain of Israel. The Lord in this scripture, if you go back and read, was talking to the mountain of Israel. Say, I will cause you to be habited as you were formerly. So if you are sick in the body, God is restoring you as you were formerly. Because when he had done making man, he said, he looked at him and he said, everything was good. The only thing that was lacking was there was no Eve yet. So it is not good for him. So the only thing that was not good was loneliness. So for you that you are believing God for a future partner, for a wife or a, a husband, the Lord will bring your heave to you. The Lord will bring your head down to you. So that's the only thing he said was not good. So he's going to restore you to what you were formerly. And I will do better, better things for you. 
than at the beginning. So you may think the beginning was good. He said, we we'll give you the latter rain and the former rain. My God, whatever you have experienced either two, he said, I will even do better. I will even do better in the name of Jesus. Say for, also I will do better for you than your beginning. Then you will know with great confidence that I am the Lord. That will be your testimony. I said that will be your testimony. Now, another inheritance is power. Power and victory. Power and victory. Power and victory. John 6 and in 33. Give us John 6 and in 33, sir. John 6, 33. Now, it says, for the bread of God. Hmm. Uh, John 16, my bad. John 16. John 16, 33. Thank you, thank you. Now, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Say, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Peace again. In the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous. Somebody say to yourself, I'll be courageous. I'll be confident. I'll be undaunted. I'll be filled with joy. Because Jesus has overcome the world for me. Because Jesus has overcome the world for me. You know, it says, it says, my conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. Oh, Holy Spirit, breathe on your word. I feel, <laughs> this word is boiling in my bones. My conquest is accomplished. So it is done. It is now an inheritance for you. That battle, the Lord has completed it. Everything, your immigration struggle is being accomplished. And the victory is abiding. Oh, we'll walk in abiding victory. In the name of Jesus. Over those children that, we, that are challenged, their conquest is accomplished in Christ. And the victory is abounding. In the name of Jesus. I think it was Sister Nifemi that when you were leading us, you gave me the fifth point, which is healing. Isaiah 53 and in verse 5. You said that scripture and my head was just all over the map. Isaiah 53, 5. It said, but it was wounded for our transgressions. It was crushed for our weaknesses. Our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, the punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we were healed. So we have inheritance of health. So anytime you are challenged and devil is looking, putting the doctor's report before you, tell him by the stripes and the wounds of Jesus, I've healed. I'm, I'm healed. So it's an inheritance that we must enter into. Now, time is running far, faster than I thought. Now look at this. So how do I enter into this inheritance? How do I enter into my inheritance? How do I enter into my inheritance? Please, sir, give us Acts 20 and in 32. Acts 20 and in 32. Acts 20 and in 32. Thank you. Now listen to this. They say, and now I commend you. This is Paul. Or is it Paul or Peter? One of those guys. And now I commend you to God. No, this is Peter, not Paul. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to confuse you. So he said, now I commend you to God, placing you in his protective loving care. I thought someone was going to say, man. And I commend you, now watch this. I commend you to the word of his grace, the counsel and promises of his unmerited favor in the word. Are you following they say, his grace is able to build you up. What year is this in Restoration Church? It's the year to build up. We are built up in the word. The grace of the word is able to build you up. And to give you the rightful what? Inheritance among all those who are sanctified 
that is among those who are set apart, qualified for God's purpose, all believers. If you're a believer here, say amen. amen. Every believer online, say amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. So the word, he said, I commend you to the word. To the word. To the word of his grace. It is in this word that there is counsel. It is in the word that there is pro- his promises are the unmerited favor of God, the grace to build you up, and the grace to give you a rightful inheritance. So rather than going to the probate office, because Jesus is dead, so all we need to do now is to read the will and to enter into our inheritance. Rather than going to the probate office, this is your probate. Scriptures. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need an attorney. You don't need a top party. You don't need a prayer contractor. All you need is to, Hebrews 4, 16, come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace for help in the time of need. Come boldly. Pick up your scriptures and go boldly and go search out your inheritance. Leave this meeting today and let the word of God unlock his inheritance for you. Make it an habit every day or a habit, whichever one is correct. Every day that I will not step out of my house without laying my hands on one inheritance for today. Jesus, my Jesus, your Jesus. Hebrews 10 and in 7. Hebrews 10 and 7 say, I came in the volume of the word that is written concerning me to do your will. Now listen. He said, then said hi, behold, I come to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the scroll of the book. King James says, in the volume of the book. So in the scrolls of scriptures. Every letter of scripture represents an inheritance for you. If Jesus could go and search it out, then there is nothing stopping you and I to go in the volume of the book that is written concerning us, that is written concerning you, and lay hold to your healing. Lay hold to oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm sure she will remember. She had one terrible, hateful boss a while ago. And she will come home from work distressed and unhappy. It was one day we found out that we have an inheritance. So we just went on our knees and we prayed casually. Child of God. He got back to the office the following day. This manager was fired. You have an inheritance. We shouldn't live life staying on the streets of defeat when our address is on Victory Street. We need to change location. We need to change address. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have two more minutes, but we have to pray. Number one, before we pray, there is a qualification to enter into the inheritance. I have a lot here, but let's leave it at that. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will breathe upon it. Now, if you are not born again, now again, that born again, but if you know that you are not living a life I believe it's in Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 1 that says we should live a life that is worthy of our calling. Live a life that is worthy of our calling. Now, thank you very much. (laughs) Whoever is there, God bless you. It's 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 a appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. There is a call upon every one of us. 
of God, you don't need to stand on this altar to preach before you know you have a call. Where everywhere you are, as long as you are born again, there is a call on your life. There is a standard to live this call. That is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, mature behavior, a life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. So if you are such that you don't live all these lives, all eyes closed, just, you are not going to raise your hand, just speak to the Lord in your heart. If you are watching us online, you know you are not qualified. Just lift your voice unto heaven and ask for mercy, and the Lord will qualify you. Say, I do not have joy in the death of sinners. You know, the days of ignorance, God overlooks, Scripture says, for now every man shall repent. So at the time of repentance, Romans 3 and 19, I believe, Scripture says, repent it therefore and be converted. You know? So let there be repentance and let there be conversion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, you're going to give me five minutes. We must pray. We're not here to give lecture, but we're here to, to connect to the throne of God. Can we please rise? Can we please rise? Can we please rise? Can we please rise? We're going to lay hold to certain inheritance tonight, this morning. And I want you to release all your faith into it. And now we're going to go back to Isaiah 58 and in verse 11. Isaiah 58 and 11. This is my In fact... <laughs> In recent days when I ran into this scripture and there was revelation of it, I've been holding, chewing, drinking, sleeping with it, romancing it, caressing it, and I want to share that scripture with you. Isaiah 58 and verse 11. It says, and the Lord will continually guide you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that was a very lame amen. That was a very weak, one-legged amen. Say, and the Lord will continually guide you. And satisfy your soul in scorched and dry places. And give strength to your bones. And you will be like a watered garden. Like a spring of water. Whose water do not fail. Lift your voice unto heaven. This is an inheritance that you must claim. That Father, Lord, there must be guidance for me. The Lord will continually guide me. The Lord will satisfy me. It is my inheritance. It is my, it is a promise of God in the will, the Bible of God, I mean the Bible, the word of God for me. Say the Lord will give me strength in my bones. I will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring of water whose water do not fail. This is my inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Another inheritance is rest. We're going to claim rest. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. I don't know what you're going through right now, but you're going to say it is written. Come to me, all who are weary. Do, let's do this in King James. I think I like it stronger. It's kind of, kind of uh, meaty in King James. Thank you. Now, it is written. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And I every led him, and I will give you rest. Somebody is going to enter the rest of God. Lay hold on to this inheritance. It is written that with my labor and in my every leading, I should come unto you. So, Jesus, I come to you today under the weight of this circumstance, the weight of this financial body, the weight of this emotional body. I come to you. And I find rest in you. In the name of Jesus. It is my inheritance. So I have rest. I have rest over my children. I have rest. Over our spouses we have rest. At your place of work there is rest. At school there is rest. In your business there is rest. In the name of Jesus. In restoration church there is rest. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we are praying. And lastly. Romans 8.37, Romans 8.37, we're going to do 37 and 38. Now we're going to claim this inheritance. Now it said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are more than conquerors. 
That is your inheritance. Amen. You are more than conquerors. Therefore, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, even as big as they are, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. 39, 39, 39, 39, 39, sir. Nor, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Claim that love. Claim that love. Nothing will separate us. No challenge, no mountain, no difficulty has the capacity to separate us from the love that God has given unto us. And go ahead and give him praise. Father Lord, we give you praise. You are worthy. 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 Lord, we thank you for the inheritance that we have in you. We thank you for the inheritance that we have in you. We thank you for sonship. We thank you for peace. We thank you for healing. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you. We thank you for wealth. We thank you for victory. We thank you, O oh God. Be glorified in Jesus' name, we pray. And unto him that is holy, him that is true, him that opens and no man can shut, he shuts and no man can open. Father, Lord, we thank you. You are the one that has the key of David. Lord, we bless and honor your name. We unlock inheritance by the key of David.